Hi everyone, welcome back to Study Hat. In today's video, we'll be learning about rates of change. So, the learning objectives for today's video would be to understand what a rate of change is and to complete some questions from the main categories of rate problems. So now, what are rates? So rates are very similar to speed, which means it's how fast something changes. Okay, so sometimes we talk about working rate and working rate is how fast a person takes to complete a job. Water rate is how fast water flows in or out from a tank. And printing rate is how fast a printer can print. So basically it's how fast something changes or how fast work gets done. Okay, so we're going to have a look at a few examples today to figure out how we can learn how to answer word problems relating to rate. So now we're going to look at a few examples to see how we can solve rate related questions. Okay, so now we have Melvin who can complete a project in four days, Carti who can complete a project in six days. If Melvin and Carti were to work together, how long will it take for them to complete the project? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to draw a table. So this is a very good method that you can pick up when you're working with rate questions. So First of all, let's split this into three sections, okay? So now this is the number of days that is taken by each of the two members and this is the project or number of projects that we will look at, okay? So first we'll talk about Melvin and we'll look at Carti and we're going to split this here. And because we are looking at how Melvin and Carti will do together, We'll have another column with M plus K. All right. Okay. So now let me use a different colored pen so that you can see the difference. Okay. Now Melvin requires four days to complete one project. So four, one. Okay. And Carti needs six days to complete one project. So now what a lot of people do is that they add these two. So that's 10. And then they add these two. That's two, right? So 10 days for two projects. So five days for one project. So that's actually not mathematically correct. So what we're going to do is we're tr going to try to find a common ground for these two. Okay. Now let's find a common lowest common factor for these two numbers. So that will be 24, right? So we're going to times six times four. We do the same thing here. So times six and times four. So we'll have 24 here. I'm just going to circle it. 24 here, six here and four here. So just looking at the numbers in the table, let me try to interpret for you what these numbers mean. So Melvin needs 24 days to complete six projects and Carti can complete four projects in 24 days. So if you give both of them 24 days, Melvin will complete six projects while Carti can complete four projects. Okay, so this means that in 24 days, Melvin and Carti can complete 10 projects. So I've added these two together. 10 projects. So now Melvin and Carti, their rate of working together is 24 days for 10 projects. So how many days do they need for one project? Because this is what the question wants, right? So we divide this by 10 to get one, correct? So we do the same here. We divide this by 10. So that gives us 2.4 days. So if Melvin and Carthy work together, they will need 2.4 days to complete the project. Okay? Now, for this question, it's sort of, we're going we're gonna to work backwards. So let's have a look at the question first. Sue and Yang took five days to complete their group homework. Sue could finish the homework alone in seven days. How long would it take for Yang to complete the project alone? So now, in the previous question, we knew how long each of them take to complete the project. And then we have to figure out how much time they need if they work together. But in this case, how much time they need to work together is already given. Now we're going to find out how much time Young needs separately to complete the project alone. So same concept with, the, um, with what we did before. So we're going to split again. I'm going to draw this table. This table is really useful, especially during exam. It helps to sort of put things in perspective for you to work through them one by one. So here again, we're going to look at days. And here is homework, right? So now we've got, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep Sue here, Young here, and Sue and Young here. So now Sue can finish her homework. So let's say one homework 
in seven days. Now, Sue and Young, they need five days together to finish the group homework. Now, again, we find the common number between five and seven. So we're going to times this by five. So we do the same thing for the homework. So we times this by seven and we do the same for the homework, which means they need 35 days, oh sorry, Sue needs 35 days to finish five homework. Sue and Young, they need 35 days to finish seven homework. Now, in this case, we're not going to add these two together because this is plus together, correct? This is the total, total number of days they need to complete their homework. So what we're going to do is with 35 days, so the time remains the same, Young would need seven minus five. Seven minus five equals to two days. So in 35 days, Young can finish two times of a homework, okay? And now we're gonna find out how much Young needs to complete the homework alone, right? So we need to divide this by two. So whatever you do here, you do on the left side as well. So divide by two. So Young needs 17 and a half days to complete her homework on her own. Okay, so in this case, it's similar to what we did before in the previous question, but in this case, we have the total value first. So you got a minus instead of adding together like how we did in the previous question. Okay, so we can have a look at the previous question. You saw that we added it together. Six plus four gives us 10, correct? But that's because we're finding the total amount of uh, days that they need when they work together. But in this question, that's already given. That's why we minus it, okay? Now, this question is a very common question when it comes to exams, okay? And we're gonna work through it step by step. Again, there's another table method for this one, okay? A bakery has five workers. Together, they can produce 20 cakes in 10 hours on average. How long will it take 50 workers in the bakery to produce 400 cakes? So now, first of all, there's two aspects to this question. There is an input aspect and an output. So now, the input, I'm just going to put in and I'm going to put out. So input is the number of workers that we have and the amount of time that they spend and the output, it will be the number of cakes. So I'm just going to put number of C, okay? And the time in this case is in hours. So I'm just going to put a bracket and put an H. Now, I've got five workers. So this is what the question has given us. Five workers, 20 cakes in 10 hours. Okay, this is what we've gotten. Now, what we're gonna do here is we are going to, first of all, fix the time. So fix time. So I wanna keep the 10 hours here, okay? Now, we're looking at 50 workers, correct? So I need to multiply this by 10 to give me 50 workers. So time is still the same. So in 10 hours, how many cakes can 50 workers produce? So because I times 10 here, I'm going to have to times 10 here as well. So 20 times 10 gives us 200 cakes. So now 50 workers can produce 200 cakes in 10 hours. Okay, now what we're going to do is we have to find out the time, correct? So we keep the 50 workers here. But in this case, I need 400 cakes. That's what the question wants. 400 cakes. So what's going to be the time here? Okay, now what we do is... So the worker, number of workers do not change, but the number of cakes have changed. So how much has it changed by? I have times two, correct? So whatever I do here, I have to do here as well. So I'm going to times two. So 10 times two gives us 20. Hence, I will need 20 hours for 50 workers to make 400 cakes, okay? So it's always important to fix the time first. Before you change one element, fix one element first and then work through the next part. Okay, so this is a very important concept. It would be good if you can practice this question again at your own time. But yeah, so that's it for today's lesson. Today we learned how to tackle different rate questions that may appear on your PSLE questions. Have a go with the quiz right after this and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!